On Blues Radio International, I'm Jesse Finkelstein. Dr. Janice Johnston, a recipient of the Keeping the Blues Alive Award and the head of the Blues Foundation's Heart Fund, is on the front lines of the coronavirus. Let's go talk to her. You're on the front lines. What's this like? Can I swear on your show? And certainly. I try to keep it a family show, but this is real. Well, it's a shit show out there is what it is. It's uh, very, very chaotic. Uh, there's a lot of people that are sick and uh, a lot of people calling. I've never, ever seen anything like this in, in my career. I got off the phone with a couple of friends in Italy a few hours ago, and the situation there is truly dire. Uh, are we headed for something like that? Well, hopefully if everybody heeds the warnings and stays inside and isolates themselves, I think we can hope to flatten it and slow it down. Um, but I, it, there's people that just aren't doing what they've been told to do. And uh, very, very frustrating. A lot of folks, and I'm here in Florida, I see young people who somehow as people do feel sensible mm -hmm. should they be concerned about that so they mm -hmm. say for about 80 percent of the people it will be a mild type of illness they'll be okay but uh, i can tell you even from the folks that i've seen so far it's it's you know something that can linger for quite some time um you know even though we've only started to report positive cases here where I live in Arizona, these people have been sick for a while and they're just not getting better. So, you know, if you're sick and you're sick and you're sick and you can't work, um, even though you're going to come through it on the other end, it's significant in terms of its impact. And people can be asymptomatic carriers as well, right? The fact that someone feels okay and is around as if it doesn't matter, it really does matter. Right. Yeah, so we do think that uh, people can be shedding the virus and feel okay. So then they'll be out and, you know, giving it around. Um, so definitely, I mean, some people are just not going to know that they're ill or they might just have really mild symptoms and choose to ignore that. Um, and that's going to infect somebody in a, in, else in a different way. You're one of the biggest advocates I know of health. We're in a crisis for me economically as well in terms of health. what do you see as the best way we can help this time so I, I think for p people to hear what the warnings are and to and to recognize those we are we're worried about our health care providers I can tell you right now I do not have enough of what we need to keep us safe um, patients come in not wearing masks or not covering their face. And honestly, I don't have enough masks to give out anymore. Um, today, I had desperate calls from pharmacy uh, pharmacists begging, begging us to give them masks because they don't have what they need to cover themselves up. And what's happening is people are getting prescribed medications. Oftentimes, we're using Tamiflu, we're using antibiotics, you know, inhalers, cough suppressants, things like that to try to make people feel better. And where do they go? They go to the pharmacy, right? And, of course. And these poor pharmacists are going to be um, getting sick. I can guarantee you of that. Um, I know that our health care force is going to get sick as well, too. And um, I, uh, our facilities, we've been doing telemedicine for years now at Redirect Health, and we know how impactful that that can be to keep people um, uh, out of the doctor's office, out of the emergency room unnecessarily, um, and, uh, uh, and at work, right? So we've known the benefits of that for a long time, not just for acute illnesses, but, you know, to talk about depression, to you know, talk about your thyroid, we can order labs remotely, all of that um, kind of stuff. But if people have access to telemedicine, I would highly, highly encourage them to do so. Um, that keeps you out of the doctor's office, um, and keeps things rolling along. What do you think is on the horizon for musicians who 
just can't wait to get out in public and and play. Yeah. So that's that's so unclear because I don't think this virus is going to be over in two weeks, and I don't know when they're going to lift the restrictions in terms of letting people go out, and that's that's a, that's a worry, right? So for the musician community, say that things lift in a couple of weeks or three weeks, four weeks, who knows? I don't think the virus spread is going to have stopped by then. We're most likely going to be looking at this for months to come. You know, what we're looking at right now is to try to flatten that curve so the, the onslaught of sick people um, needing hospitalizations is, uh, is, is going to be kind of flattened. How can people access telemedicine who've never had any connection with telemedicine before and don't even understand what it is? Sure. Uh, so through your physician, a lot of most physicians have uh, uh, started to offer telemedicine services now. Um, if you don't have a physician or you don't have health insurance, often that can be very difficult to find, find someone to help you. Um, I, we've actually, uh, previously we offered telemedicine through our membership program. We have a direct primary care program, and we've actually opened that up um, to anyone, even if they're not a member. Uh, if you just go to redirecthealth.com, you can see how to do that, and um, that's available in all 50 states. Um, not across the world, though, um, but at least in all 50 states. So I would look to your primary care provider, um, and insurance companies also will offer that, um, too. Sometimes they'll have a directed one, but um, physicians are overrun on telemedicine as well right. uh, this time. Um, I can tell you that how the telemedicine services generally will work is uh, – if you are on insurance, it's a very small amount of money that gets paid on a per person per month. Well, they're overrun, and so they're not really used to the uh, utilization rates that they're seeing right now. So I'm not sure that the model, the business model, is going to continue to work um, the way it's set up right now. Um, they run at about, I think it's maybe 10%, something like that. We've been used to... Um, over 200% utilization at Redirect Health for the past six years. So we really feel like we're well poised to kind of handle this. And um, mm -hmm. uh, I really would love to see that this method of treating patients be used as, as much as possible. This whole crisis is transformed the face of a lot of things, including medicine, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. How do you see it changing? So... I think a lot of physicians who were not um, used to telemedicine before are now seeing the benefits um, of using it. And uh, honestly, from a financial model, the, the compensation for the physician was quite minimal. Um, and uh, thankfully, Medicare changed that and they put it in writing on Tuesday so that your physician, um, uh, that the business model still is the same, whether you're in the office or you're um, like we're doing right now, right? So we're having a, a video um, chat. Um, there's no sense, really, honestly. Like, if I'm going to review your test results, why do you have to come into my office to do so? We've already, you know, but, you know, often there, there's going to be times where we do have to examine you and we have to lay hands on you. But if we have all the information at hand, oftentimes that is not the case. So I think um, people are going to really understand um, how that works and start to feel really comfortable, patients as well. Um, and, uh, you know, in terms of the business model for physicians, you know, we're really worried right now as well. Um, we want to help as many people as we can. Um, but if, if our means of paying for the stuff to protect ourselves, um, runs out, um, then we're going to be really in, in harm's way. So I'll give you an example of the, what they, they call it PPE, personal protective equipment costs about ten dollars uh, a piece and of course we can't really get them right now we all want them but we can't really get them and in a primary care model that um, we operate on a super super thin margin super thin some people think oh doctors you're rolling in it it's, it's just it's not the case you know anymore there's a lot of overhead that goes into what we do and um, you know we're worried about uh, honestly not having enough money to meet the needs of what we need to be safe and pay our staff and everything else. How is facing what we know is an absolute certainty 
that you're going to end up with this, yet knowing that you've got an obligation to treat patients. How does that feel for you? It's uh, it's scary, you know, and certainly over the past week, I've gone through lots of emotions, um, for sure. Um, I lead a team of about 250 uh, individuals at our healthcare company. And, um, you know, what's the Alicia Key song? This girl is on fire. That's what I feel like. And, and we, sure. we, keep, we, we keep singing that um, over and over again. And I'd say... Most of the people that work for me, I'd say almost 99%, we're ready. We're ready, and this is what we signed up for. We signed up to save lives and to help people. We know that we're going to get sick. I, I would imagine probably most of us are going to get sick. Um, it's hard not to rest right now and get your proper rest, which, of course, is going to affect our health. I tell you, I haven't slept more than three hours um, a night in the past week. Um, and I'm starting to feel that now I'm not eating the way I should because it doesn't stop. It just doesn't stop. I think I went the other day and realized I'd had a, a cutie all day. One of those little oranges. Well, wow. and, um, you can't live like that. I can't long. live like that. And, and, you know, I know that I know better than that, but when you're kind of in a, uh, a military mode, you're just, and I'm the, I'm the general. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's hard not to kind of stop and look after yourself. Um, so we need to recognize that. Um, I would really, really encourage patients to be patient with us. Um, we have an awful lot on our plate um, right now and it, it's, it's difficult to juggle it and we're juggling our own emotions and our patients' emotions. And it's, it's difficult. Um, I, I wish uh, there are a few really annoying things that came across my desk today. One was from an insurance company that was asking me to change a patient's inhaler from uh, Provental to Ventolin. Okay, they're the same damn drug. And I, I, it, I did it. I changed it because I want this patient to have the medication that they need and, and have it be paid for. But honestly, they cost the same just cover the drugs and leave us to do our job. Um, you know, for me to have to spend time to process prior authorizations or referrals or things that are meaningless, meaningless things. If I think you need to go see a surgeon, you need to go see a surgeon. Don't make me go through hoops right now. Um, give us the support that we need and take away those barriers right now. Music is an important <clears throat> thing for all of us to get through anything that's difficult. Mm -hmm. I know people are singing from the ballets in Italy. And mm -hmm. I, talked I to saw some that. Are involved in that yeah. this afternoon. And you're what role does music play in helping us keep centered and keep on course during this very difficult time? Yeah. Well, we all know that music heals, right? And that's something that fills people up. I think we need to make sure that we spend some time focusing on things that make us happy and distract us um, and take us to another place. Um, things that bring us together. I mean, uh, you know, I mentioned the Alicia, Alicia Keys song, This Girl Is On Fire. We have a lot of females in our office and we, it's our fight song, but it makes us feel good, you know. Um, but yeah, I think we need to, Honestly, social media can be great because it can feel like a place where you can connect with each other and you can laugh, but it can also just be just too much. It's just too constant. And I think we need to turn off uh, as well, too. And music is a perfect way um, to be able to do that. And all of us who appreciate you do to help you at this point in time. Yeah. Wow. That's, uh, well, keep, uh, keep giving medical providers some thumbs up and some word of thanks. It, it goes a long way. Um, today, somebody random sent us pizzas for lunch today, just to thank us for what we were doing. I'm not saying that people need to go out and, and do things like that, but just a thumbs up and uh, keep going and we love you um, kind of thing, I think really helps to let us know that we are doing um, the right thing. Um, and of course, I'm a huge proponent of the Heart Fund with the Blues Foundation. And 
I know that there are going to be blues musicians that are going to run into medical issues and are going to need help. And if we can fill that pot up, um, that will help more people. And um, so I, I would really encourage people to go to blues.org and donate to heart. And there's also um, a method to actually help uh, musicians who are going to struggle with living expenses and things like that, as of probably a lot of other people are too. Well, half of the entire blues community, and on behalf of all of us who are watching this, I want to thank you very much for all that you've done and all that you continue to do to keep the musicians and everyone around healthy. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us tonight, and I hope you can get a few more minutes of sleep. I'd like to leave you just on one at least encouraging note. Um, uh, I, my first availability of testing was last week, and I saw a couple 65 and 72, um, both unwell. Um, and I got the results back today, so it took six days to get those test results back. They both were positive. I, you know, pretty much knew that they were going to be positive. Uh, but I will tell you that I've called them every single day. Um, since they came into the office, and they're doing so much better. Um, they sound good on the phone. They don't sound short of breath. They're feeling back to their, their normal selves. They're not taking medication anymore. And so we worry about, we always say the elderly over 60, and um, these people are, you know, in that category. They had other outstanding health issues, and they're doing okay. They came out on the other side. Thank so that's, an, that's, that's something I think that people do need to um, here, because sometimes we think you get it, you're dead, and it's, and it's not going to be that way for everybody. And the other thing that I'll leave you with is that, at least here in Arizona, um, people that we tested yesterday, I got the results back today. Um, so things are improving in terms of our process and our capabilities, um, and hopefully as more and more things come online, we'll, we'll see that as well, too. Thank you very much for taking uh, some valuable time to, to talk to us. Yeah. You so okay, much I'm gonna go have some dinner. <laughs> okay, enjoy it. Take care. Okay, all right. Bye. Take care. Bye bye.